As you might know, when we use an operational amplifier in a circuit, by connecting a voltage reference of for example 2.5 volts to its inverting inputs, and a triangle voltage between 0 and 5 volts to its non-inverting inputs, then the op amp would create a square wave on its output. The reason for this behavior can be explained by the first golden rule of op amps, which you should be familiar with if you watched my basics video about the subject. But anyway, the rule states that an op amp will do anything to achieve a zero volt difference between its inputs. But since our op amp configuration got no feedback system, the output either swings up to the positive supply voltage if the non-inverting input has a higher voltage potential than the inverting inputs, or swings down to zero volts if the inverting input voltage is higher than the one on the non-inverting input. This way, the op amp acts as a comparator which is an important circuit when it comes to monitoring voltages and for example activating an alarm if they fall underneath a certain threshold value. But of course, comparators are not perfect. If we observe the output voltage while the monitored voltage crosses the reference voltage, then we can see that there is not one definite transition. There are tons of pulses. So in this video, I will tell you all the basics about so-called Schmidt triggers which would be the solution to our noise related problem. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. One fact about them. The annual production capacity of JLC PCB is 200,000 square meters for different layers of PCBs. Upload your Gerber files to order high quality PCBs for low prices, currently even with free shipping. All we need to turn our comparator into a Schmidt trigger is a couple of resistors. And depending on how we connect them to the comparator, we can create a non-inverting or an inverting Schmidt trigger. But what is the function of such a Schmidt trigger to begin with? Well, as I said before, with a comparator we got one threshold value, which determines whether the output is high or low. A Schmidt trigger on the other hand offers two threshold values, a high one and a low one. So only if the to be monitored voltage passes the high threshold value, the output gets pulled high. And only if the low threshold value gets undershot, the output gets pulled low. This way, we can avoid noise cost oscillation on the output, because in the so-called hysteresis voltage between the two thresholds, no switching of the output is possible. Now this functional principle of a Schmidt trigger would equal that of a non-inverting one, while an inverting Schmidt trigger would basically work the same, but reverses the output states for its high and low threshold values. And of course, we can calculate the hysteresis and threshold voltages for both Schmidt trigger types, with a few different formulas. If you're interested in that, then definitely check out the video description, where you can find some useful links. But since you rarely build up a Schmidt trigger with an op amp nowadays, let's rather focus on the 74HC14 hex inverting Schmidt trigger IC, that I often like to use. First off, its datasheet tells us the universal symbol of a Schmidt trigger. And after connecting the IC to a supply voltage of 5 volts, we can connect our to be monitored voltage to one of the 6 data input pins and observe the Schmidt triggered signal on its corresponding data output pin, which is obviously, due to the name of this IC, inversed. But don't worry, if we put two of them in series, then we can get rid of this inversion. Now by utilizing a potentiometer on the inputs, I slowly rose and lowered the voltage in order to find out that the two threshold voltages were around 2.1 volts and 3.1 volts, which pretty much correlates with what the datasheet claims. At this point, you should have a basic understanding of what Schmidt triggers can do, so the question remains when to use them. Well, let's say you got a push button which you would love to use as an input for an awesome project. If we use a 10 kilo ohm pull up resistor to connect one side of it to 5 volts and the other side to ground, then we can utilize the oscilloscope to observe that the voltage gets pulled down to ground whenever we push the button. But wait a minute, 
Let's zoom in on the transition from the low to high state, which reveals that there's no fluid transition. Instead, we got a lot of bounces from the mechanical push button, which could lead to problems for our project. That is why we must debounce it, by firstly adding an RC network to the output of the switch to decrease the rise slash full time of the bounces, so that we can afterwards add a Schmidt trigger in order to recreate the sharp edges and thus create a fluid switch transition. Perfect for our project. But then again, if you would try to add the push button to an Arduino circuit, then we would only need the RC network for the bouncing, since the digital inputs of the microcontroller already offers a high and low threshold voltage, which is just like a Schmidt trigger. Next, we can add a capacitor and resistor to a Schmidt trigger, like it shown here, in order to create a simple relaxation oscillator. Because of the hysteresis voltage, the capacitor gets charged slash discharged continuously, which results in a square wave on the output. And by utilizing a potentiometer as a variable resistor, we can easily reach frequencies in the kilohertz range. Last but not least, a Schmidt trigger is very useful if you got a noisy or worn out data signal that you want to freshen up a bit. And with that being said, you should now be familiar with the basics of Schmidt triggers and understand why they are often very important components. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.